Uh, first of all, let me, let me say this to you. We need a comprehensive energy policy that addresses the consumer's interest today, not one that's going to take 10 years to get to. And when, when we look at our options, I think we need to look, go by the, these three guideposts. We need to become more energy independent. We need to look after the interests of consumers. And overall, we need a, a, a plan that's better for the environment. I think that where we are today, consumers deserve to have someone who can stand up and say, we need to look at all of our available resources. And that includes, in my opinion, offshore drilling. When we look at where we are today, we need to have a plan that says that we're willing to do what it takes to tell the rest of the world that America is serious about taking care of our own energy needs. And I believe that we should have a, a plan that says it, that, first of all, those, uh, those companies that are out there that have not been using leases, they need to use them or they, they need to lose them. And then we need to also say we're willing to open up those areas that are environmentally safe to drill in. We need to use some of the revenues off of those proceeds to help fund alternative energy uh, investments in the, in, the, uh, in the near and long term. And we need to look at other ways to bring other things to the table. We have a great opportunity in this country to invest in additional wind energy. And we're seeing that right now. And there's a plan out that would, that would create a, a possibility of up to 20% of our energy, electric energy sources coming from wind energy over, over the course of time. But right now, today, we need to couple those long-range vision uh, possibilities with, with what we can do to help deal with these gas prices and fuel prices. They are eating this district and much of this country up today. And we have got to be serious about sending the message that's necessary. And that includes cracking down on speculators and working on oil companies who have excess profits. Thank you. Mr. Jacob, do you share any of this there in Gorilla? Um, no, I don't. Um, I think that we have to protect the environment. Now, obviously, there are places that we can drill, and um, there's not as, as many environmental issues but when scientists tell us that the environment will be damaged, I think we have to protect the environment for future generations. You know, this isn't just about us during our lifetime. We have to take care of this planet for our children and their children. But I do think that there are some opportunities for future drilling. I also have been reading about things like hydrogen cars. Honda has already come out with a hydrogen car in California. People are driving them. There's three hydrogen filling stations. Uh, BMW is coming out with a hydrogen car. Um, you know, the United States government consumes 50% of the fossil fuel oil, gasoline, uh, that we consume in, here in America. And what would happen if the United States government put out a request for bids for hydrogen cars by the year uh, 2020. Uh, do you think that maybe GM and all the other car dealers might start coming up with hydrogen cars? We need to move very, very quickly. Uh, Judy has talked about an Apollo-like mission. Uh, other people call it a Manhattan Project. Uh, we need to move quickly to get away from fossil fuels because at some point, at some time, we're just simply going to run out of oil and we need to move very, very, very quickly. And, you know, um, what if we offered, what if the government offered um, loans to uh, gas stations to retrofit for the possibility of hydrogen cars? You know, we've seen America during, during World War II convert its economy from uh, a peacetime economy to a wartime economy. I, I think America can do anything that it puts its mind to do if there's a will, if there's a leadership to do it. Inspector? Thank you. Um, this past spring, while my mother was hospitalized, I was just chatting with the nurse, uh, and this was this was when we started to see the rise in gas prices. And I was talking with her, and found out that she was coming in from Warrington every day. We talked about how the gas prices were affecting her, and she said, "You know, I think I may have to quit my job. I may have to find something else uh, closer to home, and I may not be able to do my profession." because of the gas prices. I thought that was so tragic. 
And just the you know, microcosm of what is happening everywhere. All of us are feeling the pinch. Gas prices, food prices, now Dow has come out and said that it has to raise its prices on all its products by 25%. Cost of health care. People who were making ends meet three months ago now can't make ends meet. So we have got to do something quickly. I would propose in the short term that we crack down on oil speculators. That is the most important first thing that we can do that will potentially lower the cost of gasoline by one dollar per gallon. That's what the estimates are. We can do that right now, right away. And then, as my colleagues have talked about, we do need a comprehensive energy strategy. We need to promote a new energy economy where we have, we are the world's leader for the on this particular topic. We are Americans, we are innovators, we can do this. I have talked about an Apollo Light project where if we can put a man on the moon, surely we can figure this out if we get our best and brightest minds together to sort out and make a plan and start working toward it. Overall, long term, we need number one conservation. You know what? We're patriots. Patriots get together and do the right thing. We need to number one can start to conserve and find ways of conserving. Our president should be out there right now asking us to sacrifice and conserve. We need then to promote a new energy economy and redirect these oil subsidies that we've given to oil companies to a new energy economy. Bernie, you have a last word. I uh, agree with uh, several issues that have been brought up. Uh, like Steve would say, we need to drill. I believe we need to drill safely, and we need to do that. We, we need to look at the short term and long term. That is a long term solution. Uh, Ken mentioned we need to be as far as, as safe and as possible, and I believe that too. We need to be as careful as possible. If the need is there, we need to continue on. And uh, what Judy said about the speculators, we need to look and see what's going on there. Uh, some other ideas to throw out is, uh, I think, uh, consumers and even myself, uh, more education at this point. How can we conserve and how can we save energy? What, what type of programs or, or how can we drive to conserve energy? And I'm speaking not only for the general public, but for myself. How can we serve, conserve it? I think that's a short-term solution. Uh, we need to continue looking for more alternative energy sources, such as solar and wind power and hopefully something else new in the future. I do support biodiesel and ethanol and uh, those programs here in the state of Missouri. We're a leader here in the ninth progression district. I want to see that we continue to be a leader in those areas of production. Also here in the ninth district, Hawaii's discussed it, but it's a very important program uh, that provides a tremendous amount of energy. And that's what's taking place here in Callaway County with the nuclear plant. I totally support that and feel that's a great source of energy for the future for all across the Midwest and all the United States.